Hi everyone! Uh, so, I'm uh, making this video to demonstrate the new version of the Ban in a Box uh, VST3 plugin. So, um, we have a new version. Uh, if you're familiar with the plugin, you'll probably notice right away there are a lot of uh, things different about the way it looks. Um, now, and I'm, I'm using the plugin here in the program Reaper, the DAW Reaper, in Windows, but uh, everything that I'm demonstrating in here also applies to the new version of the Mac plugin. So everything that I'm doing in here, uh, you can also do in the Mac version as well. So this video is, is basically for both Windows and Mac. So for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, with the plugin, I'll just explain a little bit about what it is and uh, how it works. So the plugin uh, generates backing tracks for you basically. You can enter any chord progression in any key. Um, you set the tempo, uh, you pick a style from literally thousands of styles to choose from, and then you generate the parts and it generates these backing tracks for you. So that's what we were hearing right now, backing tracks that were generated in the Band in a Box plugin. Um, and then you could use those however you like. And the, a common way, there are two main ways that people use the plugin in DAWs like this. Uh, one is that you can actually drag the tracks into the DAW. Uh, like we have the separate tracks, drums, piano, guitars, bass, uh, and you can drag the tracks in, for example, here, that wave button, I'll drag it in there. And there we can see, we now have a track in there. I can also drag in another track. Uh, a MIDI track here, and then we have MIDI there. Uh, you can also drag in all from the master and it gives you separate tracks here of all of them. So that's one way that the plugin can be used. Uh, in addition to that, th uh, these buttons here um, have some corresponding buttons over here that are like a secondary option uh, for these. So with the real tracks, it's audio, but you can also get the chart. If it says chart here, that means there's MIDI over here as well. Uh, it's not MIDI that was necessarily intended to be played, but it uh, but it's intended for um, displaying in notation. So you could drag this into Finale or, or something like that, for example. Um, but you could also just drag it into your DAW. I mean, the, the MIDI is there, so you can play it. Uh, it's just not necessarily what it was intended for. And for the MIDI tracks, here I uh, dragged MIDI in, but the MIDI also gets rendered uh, as audio. So here, if I drag this piano in, you see the piano there, and then I drag the wave, the corresponding wave, this is actually, these are both the same part, just one in MIDI form and one in audio form. So there's lots of options. And that is actually uh, one of the new features in the plugin. Not that you can drag those in, but it is now a lot more intuitive. Uh, we have these larger buttons here that actually have the text written out on them. We also have, now have the text written out on these. Also, it shows you whether these will be stereo or mono. So this piano, for example, has ST. So that will be a stick. Uh, oh, actually. Uh, ST, so the wave here will be a stereo wave. You can see the two channels there. These tracks are mono, so if I drag the wave in, it will be mono. So that's new as well. So I'm gonna uh, now one of the one of the main things that uh, is is new with the plugin is it now works a lot better for syncing up tracks. So I mentioned the one way to use the, the plugin is to actually drag in tracks into the DAW. But the other way that a lot of people use it for is to not even have any tracks dragged in, just have the audio playing right from the DAW itself. And that was how I was using it when the video started here. So there's no tracks in here, but if I press play in the DAW, we're hearing this. And that will sync up to whatever tracks you may have in the DAW as well. And that's, I'm going to show you that right now too. I have another project already on the go here. Uh, this is the old American folk song, O Shenandoah. Um, I've used this, uh, these tracks in previous videos and I'm going to use them again here. Uh, it's, they're very useful because it was, uh, we recorded the, the singer here, a very talented singer. Uh, to a click track, so they're they're already to a click track. It was recorded at 87 beats per minute here. 
So we can, if we have these vocals here, we can now use Band in a Box to add some tracks to these. So that's what I'll do right now. So I will insert a new track and there's lots of different ways you can add the plugin. Uh, we have other videos that go into that in more depth and specific for uh, for lots of different DAWs. But I recently used this um, this plugin, so it's under recently used. So I'll just select the plugin here. So there's the plugin. No chords entered at all or anything like that. It's we just have a blank slate right now. So I'm going to enter the chords. Uh, so now I know what the chords are for this song that's uh, that's up here. So I'll just start entering them. C, E minor, F, C, C seven, F, D minor. C, E minor, F, and G. Now this is a bit of an odd form to this song. Uh, the verse and chorus together make up uh, nine bars, and then there is a um, four-bar uh, instrumental break in between. So I'll put that in there. Uh, and I'll just type end here at the end. So that's the whole thing. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit of an odd form. It's a 13 bar form. Um, that gets repeated. You can kind of see the chunks of audio here. That gets repeated many times, but I'll just put, I'll just have it repeat two times just so that when we generate this, it'll be a little bit quicker. Uh, but of course you can put in as many courses as you want. Um, so uh, in entering a song in band in a box, you enter the chords, you also set the tempo. Now the tempo was already set in the DAW, so it's set here. But I just want to show you something. If uh, if I change this, now we can see it gives you this flashing light. That's just a warning that telling you that uh, the the tempo in the DAW is different than the tempo in the DAW is different than the tempo in the plugin. So that's and and uh, this is new uh, that it shows you the tempo in in the plugin and the tempo in the DAW as well, all here. And if I click on this flashing light, it sets the tempo to the DAW tempo, which is a useful feature. Um, so, chords entered, uh, tempo set, now we just select a style. So I'll click on the, this to open the style picker. And um, as I mentioned before, there are thousands of styles to choose from. Uh, and I wasn't lying. There's, you can see the list here shows 7,730 styles. Uh, there are lots of great filters uh, to find exactly the style it's, that you want. Um, but I actually have something in mind. So I, it's a style called Second Life. So, And the reason I want to pick this one is because uh, now I, I mentioned that this video is going to be about uh, playing using this, the, the tracks in sync with the DAW which it could do previously, but we've made great improvements to syncing up with MIDI. So this particular style uh, has MIDI bass and piano. These are MIDI super tracks. Uh, they're color coded, so you can see at a glance. And then the green ones are real tracks or real drums. So this is a combination. So that's why I wanted to pick that style there. So the style is loaded. I'll just type in the song title too. There we go. So um, now everything is done. So now I'll just press generate. And now it's going to start generating uh, these tracks. Now I'll go over, while it's doing that, I'll go over some um, uh, some of the other new features. Uh, first of all, these empty little boxes here, uh, that means the tracks are not ready. And that was, oh, no, that didn't take very long at all. So those. Uh, those empty boxes are now populated with these uh, this text here. Now previously these were tiny little boxes um, and they just had a little wave icon. So it's now much clearer exactly what these are. And any of these boxes can be dragged into the DAW as I demonstrated earlier. But that's not how I'm going to be using the plugin today so I just deleted that track. Um, I also showed you these uh, the chart ones before and the stereo and mono uh, plugs. Also, these mute and solo buttons are new. Now you could previously solo tracks and listen to these tracks and have them in sync, but it's now much more intuitive with proper MIDI and solo buttons here that work just the way they do in Band in a Box. Um, you'll also notice the master track here is not muted. So um, I'm gonna now play this, uh, so I'll pl press play in the DAW and have it sync up with this. 
But before I do that, if I play it right now, we won't hear the tracks. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see Oh, I'll also turn off the uh, metronome in, in the DAW here. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see Now, the reason we're not hearing it is because we don't have sync turned on. So I'm going to turn it on. Now, one thing, I'll just uh, bring up the preferences right now. If you want your default for it to always be on, you can enable sync for all new projects, which I'll do. So now if I press new, this will always be on. So if you are, if this is the way you generally work in, in DAWs, uh, you can, that's a good setting to turn on. Then it, it will always just automatically be on when you start. You can still turn it off and save this, save this file, and when you open this file again, it will be off. But for any new projects, uh, that will be on with that setting. So sync is on now, and now I'll just press play in the DAW. Oh, so now, um, yeah, so it's now playing this along with it, and uh, that's that's all you have to do, basically, to be hearing music. Now, uh, as I mentioned, this master track is uh, not muted, but if I unmute one of the other tracks, that automatically mutes the master. The reason for this is that this master track contains a stereo mix of all of the tracks. So if it wasn't muted, it would be duplicating. So that's one thing that doesn't work the way normal mute and solo buttons work, is that it, the, unmuting this will mute that. But there's a, a good reason for that. So, um, yeah, so we're hearing the drums right now. And we can unmute or solo certain tracks like that. But now let's check out, uh, let's unmute one of the MIDI tracks here. Now, as I mentioned before, this is MIDI and if you dragged it in, that's what it would look like. It's, it's MIDI or if you drag in from the other side, the, the corresponding rendered wave, it looks like that. So, but I haven't put any kind of plugin on here. So, uh, so what we're hearing then is we're hearing this rendered wave. So that's that's a, a new feature that's very useful for a lot of people who don't like to actually deal with MIDI. You know, putting in a MIDI plugin uh, synth onto the track, they just want to uh, render it out and hear it, and that's what you get here. And the reason we're hearing that is because of a setting in preferences. And that setting here is send MIDI data to DAW for playing MIDI tracks. And it is off. So if that is off, then, then the, uh, it will just work when you want to listen to this track here. Uh, you'll be hearing that rendered electric piano. And we'll also be hearing this, this bass as well, the rendered bass here. I long to see. So, um, however, many people might want to put uh, plug, uh, a synth plugin on here and use their own, like you might have a huge collection of great, uh, you know, acoustic pianos that you would, might want to use or, or other really good sounds that you, you want to be able to use. So, uh, if, you, if you do have that and you want to actually be sending MIDI instead, well then we can change that setting. So I'll go into Preferences and now I'll change that to Send MIDI Data. Now if I play it... Oh, I long to see. We're not hearing anything because basically it's now sending MIDI to this track where the plugin is on, but I haven't put any kind of synth on there. So, uh, so I'll put uh, a plugin on here. So now one, I'll use a recently another recently used plugin, and I'm going to use. Now you can put any uh, any software synth uh, VST plugin or other types that you uh, that you have. This one here comes with Band in a Box, so it automatically got installed. So that's there for me. So I'm going to use this one for Sando, and uh, it has a lot of options for different sounds. So I'm going to use uh, Vintage Electric Piano, right there. Okay, and I'll leave that. I'll leave this here, and now I'll I'll press play in the DAW. 
So now we're hearing both of these MIDI tracks, the piano and the bass. Uh, the MIDI is now being sent to the track and the track has this plugin on it. So that's why we're, we're now hearing it. And you could even see as I was playing it, the notes on here. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see. If I, if I solo just the bass. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see. So now when I solo the bass, you, you would you probably noticed, of course, the bass is also playing on this vintage electric piano. That's because both of these tracks are being sent to, uh, sorry, both of these uh, MIDI, uh, both uh, the MIDI here is being sent to this track and we have the plugin on that track. So doing it like this, you can't actually separate and have two different um, uh, two different instruments playing these. However, it is certainly possible to do that, and I'll show you how. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to channel this, uh, channel these instruments to different tracks. Um, most DAWs can do this, uh, and um, so, but it will be a little bit different in different DAWs. Like if you're using Cubase, I'm not entirely sure how it's done in there, but there are probably lots of tutorials uh, showing you how to do that in those DAWs as well. Not nothing to do with Band in a Box, but just showing you how to rechannel. So. Uh, you might need to look into it further if you're using a different DAW, but I'll show you how it works in Reaper. So we have these, and I'll just uh, unmute, every, unmute everything else right now. So we've got these two tracks here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put in two new tracks. So we got two new tracks, and I'll just label them bass and keys. So uh, and I will actually right now I'll put. Um, I'll use Forsando on both of these as well, but again, if you have like a really excellent collect uh, synth that plays specializes in cool bass sounds, vintage electric bass or whatever, you could use whatever synths you want. So, but I'm just going to put, uh, I'll put an acoustic bass on this one, so that's on this track here, and then I'll put another instance of Forsando on this track, and here this time I'll put an acoustic piano sound. So that's that's on this one, and then the bass is on this one. So we now have two different synths, but we need to do something first to make sure that this information here is being sent to that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the um, uh, routing on this. So let me just expand this. So this uh, this button here is for the routing here. So that opens up this dialog here, and I'm going to add a new send. And first of all, I'm going to send to the bass track. I'm not going to send any audio. I'm just going to send MIDI, uh, <laughs> MIDI and only channel 2. Now, Band in a Box uses a certain standard for channels for different instruments. Bass is sent on channel 2. Piano is sent on channel 3. So, the, so any information on channel 2 that this receives will be sent to this bass track here. I'm going to add a new send. And this time I'm going to send it to the keys. And with this one, again, no audio. And I'm going to send it uh, just anything on channel 3 then gets to send gets sent to keys here. So anything on channel 2 gets sent to bass. Anything on channel 3 gets sent to keys. Uh, I also need to, to turn off the Sforzando plugin here. Otherwise, it kind of intercepts it before it goes to those. Um, I think there's a way in that routing, there's a way to bypass the effects here, but uh, you can also just do that. So now let's uh, let's give this a listen and um, let me just, uh, I'll solo. Now here's another thing, if I, if, I, if you press solo, the, the mute and solo buttons work the same way as they do in Band in a Box. If you click on solo, it, it just solos that track, but if you go shift click, so I'll click on bass and then I'll go shift click on piano. Now both of these are soloed. So now let's play and we'll see uh, we'll see if it correctly is sending the bass to this bass uh, track and the piano to this one. Oh Shando, I long to see you away. You're all the river. 
So there's the bass. And there's the piano. Now, a um, couple other things I haven't shown you too. Um, that's, uh, I think, everything to do with the syncing. But there's some also some cool things like now uh, the different pages that we have in the plugin. Uh, there are now that's now labeled more clearly. So if I click here, these are the style tracks. Here are the extra tracks clearly labeled. Here are the the multi riff tracks also clearly labeled. You can also I'm going to use the scroll wheel now to scroll through all of these. Uh, like that. So those that's uh, a couple of new, very useful things as well. All right, one other thing I just want to talk a little bit about are the play and stop buttons up in this area. Now, these buttons do not uh, start or stop playback within the DAW itself. Those are for playing the tracks that you've created in the plugin here uh, just on their own, so you can listen to them, either the master uh, mix of all of them or as we were as we were doing with sync the individual tracks uh, and also uh, with the play and stop within the DAW here you can also double click on bars to jump to those or start it at those locations as well within the song so I'll just show you uh, this for a second I'll, I'll press play here So now you'll notice that the DAW is not playing at all, it's just the plugin playing here. And I, I want to mention one other thing too, is that the, the play and stop here uh, will work, you'll be able to hear these regardless of whether sync is on or off, because this is, this is nothing to do with syncing to the tracks in the DAW, this is now just playing within it, so that you should be able to hear audio uh, regardless of, of what this setting is. And as I mentioned before, you can jump around. You can also use the timeline up here to jump around. And with regards to what you're actually hearing, uh, specifically referring to the MIDI tracks here, that is the same as, the, uh, that's dependent on the setting we saw earlier here. That depends on send MIDI data. So that is checked right now. So when we press play in here, it is sending MIDI to this track and so and that uh, that's being uh, rerouted as we saw earlier to these to the bass and the keys tracks tracks here so th so that's why we're hearing those as well uh, even though it's just playing within the DAW here as well so I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and um, yeah I hope you enjoy the plugin and keep making music <laughs>